dilution is the process of preparing a less concentrated solution from a more concentrated one by adding pure solvent to the concentrated or stock solution. And you're going to find yourself having to do this quite a bit in general chemistry laboratory because the solutions you'll get from the stock room will be relatively concentrated. This helps with ease of transport and really makes our lives easier in prepping the experiments and gives you experience applying dilution as a technique that you'll have to use very often in the real world if you do any chemistry as part of your profession. So the basic idea of a dilution is fairly simple. We start with a concentrated solution, we add pure solvent to that, and out comes the diluted solution ready to use. Quantitatively, the key thing to notice about a dilution is that the number of moles, the amount of any solutes in the stock, do not change because all we're adding to the solution in the dilution process is pure solvent, right? So the number of moles of solute does not change. We can calculate that number of moles of solute using the concentration of the original stock and the volume of the stock solution that goes into the dilution, the input volume or what we call V1. So C1 times V1, where one denotes the stock solution, is the number of moles of solute. That doesn't change in the course of the dilution. So to calculate the final concentration of the diluted solution, all we need to do is take that number of moles and divide by the total volume, what we'll call V2, 2 being the diluted solution. If we rearrange this equation a little bit, we see that C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. And that just means that the number of moles of solute before the dilution is equal to the number of moles of solute after, after the dilution, right? That comes out of the definition of dilution. So I'll call that the dilution relation, dilution equation. It has many names. Many people just call it C1V1 equals C2V2. And it's a, an important relation when planning dilutions. If you have a target concentration in mind for a diluted solution, first of all, it has to be less than the stock. But as long as it is, you can use this relatively simple relation to figure out what volume of stock you need to produce a particular target concentration and volume for the diluted solution. So let's actually look at how this process works operationally and practically in the laboratory. I have everything you'll need for a dilution in front of me right here. We have a reagent bottle containing the stock solution. In this case, it's 0.1 mole per liter acetic acid. I have two beakers. Two are going to be necessary. You'll see why that is in a second. I have a wash bottle containing deionized water here. I have a volumetric flask. This is for measuring volume, and it has one mark that is very precise at a volume of 100 milliliters. Serological pipette and pipette bulb. We're going to use this to measure out the stock. And then I have Pasteur pipettes, which are in your labs in these cardboard boxes. These are small glass pipettes without markings. And as you'll see later, we don't need these to be graduated or marked or anything like that. We're just going to use them for drop-wise addition. So first step, provided we know our stock and target volumes, is to measure out the amount of stock solution we want to use and place it in the volumetric flask. I'm actually going to add a little bit of distilled water to this initially just to get a little bit of solvent in there. As long as we don't hit the mark, this is totally fine. When you're working with sol solids, this can help make sure that the solid stays in the bottom of the volumetric flask. I'm going to open the stock, and the first beaker is to hold the stock solution. So just as whenever we're pipetting anything, right, we want to transfer this out into a beaker, cap the reagent bottle, put the reagent bottle aside and basically forget about it because we won't be needing it from here on out. Now we'll pipette the stock and let's say we're interested in making a 1 to 10 dilution with a total volume of 100 milliliters. 1 to 10 means for every 1 milliliter of stock there are 10 milliliters of final diluted solution. So that tells us straight away that we need to use 100 divided by 10 or 10 milliliters of the stock solution in this. Really quickly, I'm just going to pipette 10 milliliters of the stock acetic acid solution from this beaker. You want to be as, as precise as you possibly can be with this. 
if your volume of stock is a fairly round number like 10 milliliters or 5 milliliters, it may actually be better to use a volumetric pipette for this purpose rather than a serological pipette as I'm doing here. All right, so I've got that right on the zero line and I'm just going to transfer it directly to the volumetric flask. I like placing the pipette down toward the bottom of the flask to minimize splashing and liquid on the walls. And as with all serological pipetting, I'm going to blow it out. And there we have it. So now I'm done with the serological pipette. Don't need that anymore. We're going to use all the remaining, uh, we're going to use the volumetric flask to do all the remaining liquid measuring here. And now all that remains is to add solvent. So we can use our wash bottle of deionized water to add solvent to this. Don't worry just yet about making sure the solution is uniform or anything like that, um, uniform or, or homogeneous. We're just going to keep squirting that water in until we get close but not all the way to the marking on the volumetric flask. You can use the faucet for this, you can use the, the deionized water tap, but you do want to be really careful not to overshoot that line because if you overshoot the marking on the volumetric flask, really there's no choice but to start over with your dilution. Alright, I like to fill it up until it gets just about to the neck or so. Things are going to start moving up a lot more quickly. That liquid level is going to climb pretty rapidly once the liquid gets up to the neck. At this point, we want to make sure that the solution is well mixed. There are several reasons for that. You don't want to use a solution that's heterogeneous. You want it to be the same everywhere so that when you pour it out, you know what to expect. And in addition, when the solute dissolves in the additional solvent, there may be volume changes associated with that. So we want to make sure this is really nice and well mixed so that any change in volume that occurs inside the liquid due to mixing has worked itself out before we reach the liquid level. That way we know we have exactly, in this case, 100 milliliters of solution. If you don't do that, your molarity might be a little bit misleading, right? Because you could fill up to the line, shake it up, and then with the volume change, your solution volume, the denominator of molarity, changes, and that can create some issues as you're using that solution and, and calculating with that solution and, and so on and so forth. So to mix, I like to invert this a few times. For stock solutions that are already aqueous, this tends not to be a huge issue because mixing is, is fairly rapid. You also want to make sure to cap your volumetric flask when you do this. Don't just put your thumb over the top, but actually use the cap and throw it on there. Finally, to finish the dilution, we need to add water dropwise until we get up to the liquid level. And that's what the other beaker is for. So I'm going to squirt out a little bit of deionized water into this other beaker so that we can pipette out of this. And the volumetric flask is doing all the measuring for us here. So the, pi the pipette you use doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to have graduations. You don't have to be careful how much volume you're delivering except by looking at the volumetric flask and all that kind of stuff. So a pasture pipette looks kind of like a serological pipette, but it's made of glass and it has no markings. Instead of using a bulb, a blue pipette bulb like we would for a larger pipette, we use what's called a pasture pipette bulb, which is smaller and a little bit easier to handle. Just goes over the end like so. Fits on there pretty snugly. And we use it the same way we would use a regular pipette bulb. Squeeze it, dip the pipette into the liquid, and dispense from there. I'm going to add in here, you can see that liquid level is rising pretty fast now. I'd say we're within, we're within 5 milliliters of, of getting to the marking here. As a rough rule of thumb, a pasture pipette holds about a milliliter of, or so of liquid, although that can vary. Some of them have longer stems, uh, some of them have longer, um, longer bodies up here, so. but it's a good rule of thumb. So I'm adding in, I like to add kind of along the side uh, to avoid splashing above the line. If you're being really careful, you want to be careful with where you add that, that liquid in here. And now we're kind of, we're almost there, right? I can kind of tell I'm going to get to the marking on this, uh, on this pipette delivery. 
So I'm going to add it in and then do the usual business of looking at the bottom of the liquid meniscus and making sure that the bottom of the meniscus just barely touches that liquid level. So that's about right. And from there, we've added a little bit more sol solvent, so it's a good idea to cap again and give it a little inversion once again. And here we have our diluted solution, 1 to 10, where we took 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid and diluted it to a total volume of 100 milliliters. So the final concentration here is 0 0.01 moles per liter. It's a pretty straightforward dilution, but all dilutions work on this same principle of starting with some stock and usually using a volumetric flask to add solvent up to a particular volume.